personal protection equipment for slime. Right, here we go. Um, you'll notice I have a tan lab coat. Um, we decided at Cambridge that we were going to go for a tan lab coat instead of a white lab coat because, you know, we were dealing with dirt. We were dealing with dirty things and it became really difficult to keep sending the white lab coats off. Now, it was suggested to me by a colleague in geography, something to consider. White lab coats always let you know when they become too dirty to use. So even though you may be using dirt, if you're out with a white lab coat, you'll spot when it's generally getting grubby, but you'll also spot if you spilled resin or any other chemical that may, you know, you may be using, you will see it on the lab coat. So in terms of safety, it's one to play with. I mean, I've always liked the tan one, but you guys can decide what you think is best. So on top of your lab coat, um, I'm wearing a white apron, which is fairly heavy duty. The next thing we use are household dishwashing gloves. I just buy them from Lakeland Plastics. Um, but you'll notice that I've tucked the sleeve inside the glove and that is a much better, it makes a sealed unit. And then we added to that, they're kind of um, safety sleeves is what they're called, made out of plastic. And you slide that over your, your glove and your lab coat sleeve. So remember, when you're sawing, um, you're working within an enclosed unit where there's an open front window. And you're going to be pushing on the sled your sample through the water and the blade. So you really are getting an exposure up to here with water mixed with dirt mixed with a little bit of the resin. So it's good to have that protection. Um, you can add to this, I did suggest it to some students who were super sensitive with allergies really in general, that they put a barrier cream on their hands and then they put on the glove and the sleeve. So you've got another barrier against what you're doing to protect you. Um, the next thing, which I'll just go nip over and get, is ear protection. Now, no one really likes to have to wear ear protection, but I'm afraid this is the only thing that will do. Um, the little foam uh, earplugs just do not do it and they tend to pop out. They just don't knock out enough noise and they fall out. So I would say, you know, depending on how many are working, each student really should have their own pair of ear guards. And those go on. And really, it's just enough to knock off the edge of the nuisance noise that the saw makes. And remember, this is a big, it's a circular saw, which, you know, you can liken it to what you've seen on construction sites. But what we've done is put it within an enclosure on a stand and in construction, that kind of operation is used for cutting brick and tile. So it is a big, noisy operation. And by the end of a day or a session, cutting blocks, you can have a bit of ringing in the ears. So it's just there because short term, it's probably no different than going to a loud 
music concert, but long term for your hearing, especially your thin sectioner, who is, is doing, you know, the lab work all the time. In long term, they should be wearing the ear guards. The last thing for personal protection is goggles. Now, I've got eyeglasses on, but the best practice is I should put uh, goggles over my eyeglasses. And in the lab, when you're supervising students, that is what I made them do. Because then in any event of an accident, you can say that you had all PPE working. And it just protects the student and it protects you from that accident, from that risk. So I would get also a set of goggles that can fit over eyeglasses or just, you know, wear without glasses. But uh, in the end, that kind of completes your whole PPE. And what it's guarding against is splash. Even though the saw that I'll send you, I'll send the old enclosure for you to use, um, but it's preventing splash because as you push through, there's always water that might get trapped between the blade and the sample and spray out at you. And everything you've got on, including the goggles, is going to protect you from that event. And it does happen, it does happen. I'll look down and I'll often see spray dirty water on my apron and on my glasses. So it is there for a good purpose. You must, must wear it. So the next stage, what we're going to do is I'm going to set the camera up to observe from a distance while I cut the, the blocks apart and I'll come up to the camera and show you after each cut what's being done. And that will probably work a lot better than me trying to talk over the noise of the saw. So let's, let's get on with some sawing.